see that actually some people of you like sweating in the stand. So welcome to the infrastructure review. As you might already know from previous infrastructure reviews, this talk is a little bit different because we have a lot of teams coming up to the stage. There will be some small breaks when they need to get their uh, hardware running, but we hope that we have time for all the teams here. The first team that will present the review is the Chaos Post. So please welcome them to the stage. I can see that there is actually some more posts to deliver. Is this the last card today? Not really. <laughs> okay, so you still have a lot of things to do afterwards? Indeed, yes. Uh, breakdown and about, I would say, 50 internal cards. If we cannot deliver them here, we will take them to the next event, like Congress or so, and try to deliver it there. Okay, so you still need some volunteers which will deliver some posts? It would not hurt. Okay, so if you don't have anything to do after the infrastructure review, go by, stop there at the post stand, get some cards and deliver them. Now I will read what we received actually here. So, as you can see, a very nice postcard. Dear all, thank you for using our service. We hope you enjoyed Chaos Post. We delivered three new services during camp for you. That's nice to know. Postbox certification. Serviervorschlag, so I don't know what that's in English, but I hope you know. And bidirectional chaos, so you can send a letter and you force somebody to give you a response so that you know that you actually delivered it. That's cool. We will be available at MRMCD, so that will be the next event. And Congress, of course, so stay tuned. Oh, and about figures. About 90 kilogram of postcards were delivered, 813 online submissions to the camp, and over 2,000 external postcards. Wow, that's amazing. To over 42 countries in the world. That's quite cool. Thank you very much for the post. Our next team is the Network Operations Center. So here are the guys. I think it's on. Yeah. Hello. Um, I'm Nico Duck. This is Momo Rientes. We are from the NOC or the Internet Manufacture. And we did network again this time. Compared to last camps, the goals have been pretty similar, but we have upgraded the fiber from 1 gig to each DK to 10 gig, and we tried to avoid the rodents' revenge this time. As always, we had a Wi-Fi encrypted and unencrypted for devices which are not capable of it, and we didn't want to filter it. Our team consists of 40 people from, well, worldwide, most of them from Europe, some from the UK and the US. The, our build-up started on 10th, so Saturday two weeks ago. Um, m most of the team arrived during build-up, so we kept increasing the number of people on site. And during the event, we were also supported by the great Knock help desk. Our design is pretty similar compared to Camp 2015. The campsite is known, so we could use most of the design back then. It just increased a bit in size. And we also collaborated with the C3 power teams this time. So we had most of the fiber laid um, together with the power cords and attached to them because they also protected the fiber a bit just by, because they are so huge. We also have another uplink this time. We didn't only have the fiber, but the, we have also an RF uplink. I'll come to that later. We planned the local setup in CAD this time. So we had the Orga plans, and we made our own plans for the Datenclose and the fiber. It's a bit 
tricky to see here, but all the Daten clothes have this circle around them which shows the rough, well, I think it was 40 meter circumference of the Daten clothes, and the thin yellow lines are the fiber of the DKs. So most of the planning was done in CAD and then rendered into an open street map, which some of you also used during the camp. And we also used the EMF camp pipeline, which has been used in the couple last EMF camps, uh, which produced some PDF plans for fiber runs. So this is the logical overview of the connection of all DKs. We have had a lot more DKs than the last time, and this is the logical, no, the physical overview of the fiber runs, not the logical one. Logically, it's completely different. We increased from 37 to 57 Daten clothes because of the new camp size, and the naming of the Daten clothes was also changed from cities to the grid of the Orga plan, which makes it a lot easier to find them when you search them. We have laid out 68 fibers on the site, increased from 47, and the total length of all fibers is 9.5 kilometers. The strand length, so each single core added together is over 40 kilometers. We used 140 couplers for connecting all the fibers together, and we also used new 12 core MPO fiber. So I've got a single connector connecting to a breakout box, which is easy to lay under train tracks, for example, so you don't need to dig a big hole for them. And then you have a really tidy setup in the Daten Clo. So in these Daten Clo where we use them, you see a picture on the right, we sometimes had only two MPO boxes, which compared to Daten Clos without MPO was a huge improvement. So we had around 20 of the MPO cables and well, a bit more of the non-MPO cables. External connectivity. We had a 2 times 10 gig wave from Ediscom, um, increased from 1 time 10 gig last year. And we also found the usage for the E-roller this time to spool the fiber from a 4 kilometer spool to more handleable 500 meters to 1 kilometers. Uplink was done last week on Saturday this time. We laid it through the grass as, well, I would say, always compared to last time. No big change here. Uh, the fiber is new, improved outdoor grade fiber where the vendor said that it is safe for rodents and we haven't been disappointed this time. Additionally, we've got an RF uplink. We have got a 10 gig main uplink to Gransi. We've got a 10 gig upstream provided by Deutsche Telekom. We also have a 500 megabit backup link to Gransi just to make sure that it still works when there's a thunderstorm or rain, because the 10.5 kilometers is way outside the spec of the 10 gig link. We also have a 500 megabit link to Berlin, to Alexanderturm, or Alexanderplatz, uh, which is 57 kilometers, also used as a backup if everything else failed. We also used it during build, uh, tier, setup and teardown. Um, it is? Okay. Uh, Dan, we also had a local DC, uh, which in the beginning uh, from the promised, I think we ordered over 10 kilowatts of uh, AC power, had roughly eight, eight, uh, 8 kilowatts, which we first had to improve by putting up some rescue blankets, and you can see actually the dip we produced by just putting up rescue blankets in the graph there. It's roughly 2 degrees just by uh, reflecting sunlight. But uh, on day one, we got another air condition and were able to cool that data center uh, down quite efficiently. You also might have seen uh, we had a huge transparency uh, offensive where we tried to show everyone the Daten Clo, uh, not the Daten Clo, the data center. Um, I think you all had a great look. If not, take the night. We won't tear it down uh, until tomorrow. So look at all the fancy backbone. Our core network uh, in that DC and as well as in a pop in Berlin consisted of uh, two Juniper MX 204s where we basically did all the VLAN routing. Um, we had one Arista DCS 7504 uh, as a single core. If that would have failed, we would have had a cold standby. And uh, on the very right hand side of the slides, you can actually see the now logical uh, topology of the backbone where we managed not to daisy chain any uh, data, data clause, um 
or well, not too many of them. So if there would be a power outage, which happened quite a lot in, in different grids, uh, then no other Dart and Close would be affected except the ones changed behind them. So yeah, uh, also as there was just one core, we had a loop-free design which avoided us from shitty layer 2 issues. Um, on the access side, we rolled out 96 access switches, a uh, great mix of Juniper and Arista, big thanks there to Event Infra and Proact who sponsored them to us. Uh, and also we were running all uh, Aruba Wi-Fi as we usually do. Uh, we also had uh, two 802.11ax access points uh, for a test in uh, workshop one and two. So maybe some of you have noticed that you can connect to the Wi-Fi via uh, .ax. On-site logistics, you might have seen our car. Uh, we had a great Volvo V40 uh, from 2003, which we serviced mainly by first off adding coolant to the engine, which it liked. Um, and it was a great, uh, great help for us. Um, as you see, the Dart and Close have the Wi-Fi access points mounted in their chimney, and on top they have the so-called Ohm lights, which are from the Ohm conference. Uh, we had roughly 60 of those Wi-Fi APs on a stick, uh, which were quite a pain in the ass to transport. So first off, we tried to strap it on the car, but then we built our uh, quite nice roof rack, which served us really well and now makes for a very nice uh, car. Also, obviously, uh, everything we did was automated, so we still are using Netbox as our single source of truth and changed our motto from Netbox and Chill to Netbox and Grill. And we yeah, are probably left over a thousand euros at a local butcher, so that was nice as well. Also, we have some enterprise scripts in place to ensure uh, auto provisioning of the, uh, of the switches. Monitoring, uh, you might have seen the dashboard already. If not, go to dashboard.camp.ccc.de. Uh, we're using Prometheus for all our metrics and are collecting metrics from every other oct which wanted to share them with us. Also, we did some load testing on our fibers. Um, laying them over train tracks is okay if the train stops and someone carries it uh, over the fiber and then puts it back on. So please, train operators, take a bit more care next time. But yeah, it survived. The uplink is fine and wasn't too bad. On a more serious note, uh, please, if you are bringing cable to camp and unroll it through the campsite. Please make sure to unroll it properly. Don't leave big spools. People get stuck in them. It rips out a switch from our DK, and that's not really nice. So we tried to deploy hints where we found it, but please take a bit more care. Um, so yeah, some numbers for Heiser, I guess. Uh, we had roughly 5,800 uh, consecutive Wi-Fi clients, mainly on uh, 5 gigahertz, which is nice. We've seen. Overall, roughly 12,500 devices. Um, we actually managed to saturate our uplink above, or depending on the weather situation, above 50%, which is nice. We would love to see that at Congress, if you can make that happen. Um, we had no fiber cuts, and our uptime actually is 100% for the core, so that is nice. One more thing, uh, please don't pick Dart and Close. We know you can, those locks are not secure, they're just meant as a barrier, like more of a metaphorical kind, but please don't pick the Dart and Close, respect the infrastructure, don't unplug our stuff, don't leech over the Wi-Fi, just use a cable, it makes it worse for everyone trying to use the Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, and don't also mess with other basic infrastructure. Also, shielded CAT5e cable, is no good idea in outside deployments where you have uh, different ground potentials, it will trip an RCD, so please don't do that. Also, uh, as you might have seen, all Dart and Close have a sign where it says that you should not use them as a toilet, and every sign has its story. Uh, 3DKs were uh, contaminated during build-up where we just secured them with a zip tie and one was even picked and then contaminated so please <laughs> please <laughs> yeah uh, um, camp as well as Congress network is not possible without a sponsor so please give them a warm uh, round of applause
And last but not least, uh, last but not least uh, during teardown, please don't touch our network. We will uh, unwrap everything else. If you want to help, stop by by the knock, and we will find some work for you. But please do so in a coordinated manner. Uh, if you want your cable back, please just roll it up and leave it in front of the Daten Klo. We will uh, walk around them uh, continuously and unplug you. And if you brought an SFP or XFP, uh, please bring also a plastic bag. Otherwise, we'll have to drop it in the ground and that might destroy your optics. So that's it. Questions? Thank you very much to the NOC guys. Our next team on stage will be the WOC. But if you have a question in between to the NOC, you can uh, ask the question. OK, go ahead. No questions for the knock. Let's see. Uh, C3 Wok is here on stage. Um, I think you already know what we are doing. We're, we recorded all the slides and all the talks and everyone who walked over, uh, who walked on the stage. Um, there were 82 talks on this uh, conference. This resulted in 492 new video files uploaded to media.ccc.de. Um, we had roughly 10 minutes of issues accumulated over all talks that had to be repaired. Uh, all in all, five cameras deployed in the stages managed by c 3 Walk. The last uh, camera was just deployed for the previous talk in here, the C3 Power one. Um, we covered two lecture tents. Uh, the monkey stage was managed independently. We unfortunately had one small security incident. Uh, we had to change some passwords. Uh, for the first time uh, on a camp, I think we deployed an induction loop for people with hearing aids. They can switch over from microphones to an internal um, copper coil and get direct audio without any echo from, uh, from the tent so that they can understand anything. <laughs> We're not uh, just relaxing on all the software we built and used before. Uh, in the background, there was a lot of uh, development work done for uh, getting Voctomix 2 ready, we had a first test uh, set up in one of the tents in here in uh, THM and Meitner. Unfortunately, this uh, screenshot we have there doesn't have the cameras showing, but it's a slightly different uh, GUI. Um, so, video mixer angels, you might have to learn something new on the next event. And on in the background, we fixed a lot of synchronization issues between the sources and audio and so on. Any questions so far? I don't think so. No one jumping up? Thank you very much for the no, work. No, 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 no. But we wait, there's yet. more. We, we, we had to do much more than what, we, what you saw in the tents in here. Um, we basically planned all the setup in these rooms here. We drew some uh, plans on what should be uh, placed where. Um, we hired um, some AV uh, company to bring us all the stuff. We built up everything together with them. Um, but we also worked together with all the heralds. Thank you, heralds. Thank you, stage management. Also, um, it was translation was possible with the guys and girls and other creatures from Freelingo, the Q&A and Signal Angels who given the microphones, converting streams from the internet to the question in the lecture tents. And many other teams. With, without C3 Power, we wouldn't have any lights lighting up the stage. We won't have any projectors. Our cameras would have to swap the batteries every few hours. So thank you very much to Power and thank you very much to NOC for providing us with the upstream to get the streams to all of the thousands of viewers out there in the world. 
And all of this would not have been possible if the countless hours of that work be all angels of the event, in the halls, in the background, and everywhere. So. And one last shot from our office with some, uh, I think you can't really see it. We also have a Grafana there showing how many viewers were watching the streams when this photo was taken. And down there are some audio monitoring um, pictures. Thank you. Thank you for the work. The next team here on stage will be the Logistics Operations Center. Big applause for them already. Do you see my slides? I don't see them. This should be better. It should be louder, I guess. That's interesting. There were more people here in the room. Come on, do it a little bit louder. It's getting better, but you can even do it better. And now different shifts. That's good. That's mean to put in even a different melody over so, here. Thanks to the AV Angel, who's fixing my laptop right now. Because I can't use XRender at all. So there's the next Angel coming up on the stage. <laughs> Seems to be a little bit bigger problem. Oh no, just taking stuff, okay. <laughs> that doesn't seem to be a usual problem, like putting more angels to it and it will work, so... But now ah, we can see something. This should, uh, should be better, wait. Let's cut off. the Logistics Operations Center. I got about 1.5 seconds delay here, so bear with me, please. Now we have it. Yeah, we are the luck. As you can see, we do logistics, not design, and we definitely don't do any video technic technical stuff. So let's get started. You can ah. see our AV angels are always around and always <laughs> very helpful. And we definitely don't do stuff with computers or microphones. So, um, CAM started for us actually with the early planning November last year. Um, actually, build up started on August 3rd with packing all stuff in one of our three, four warehouses in Berlin. Uh, you see pictures of it there. That's where most of the stuff is stored between the congresses and CAMP. On day 15, the first people of us arrived here at an empty uh, warehouse tent with our first build-up stuff. And, well, we started to um, unload uh, lots of 40-ton trucks. All in all, we had 40 transports with trucks, 7.5-ton trucks and 40-ton trucks. And that's only build-up and only uh, transports we organize. This doesn't include transport by DHL and stuff like this. And it doesn't include teardown. 
And we had a total of two hour waiting time in phone queues for truck replacement because we broke one truck and it's still not replaced. And we uh, delivered a total of two pallets of liquor for the bars. We delivered 120 cubic meters of couches, most of which were from last Congress and will be used on the next Congress. Some people don't take as much of as a vacation, for example, I did. So when it comes to purchasing, which since last Congress is a part of the logistics, I did that from Berlin. So we had actually a remote office in Berlin from which we also during the event got some four pallets of toilet paper because we ran out. We use about one pallet per day. <laughs> we also had to get about 200 liters of soap because we used more than we thought. <laughs> yes, thank you. For thank you for washing your hands. During the event, we also bought two more pallets of paper towels than we thought we needed. We had a total of six to pallets of toilet paper. I hope we don't have to buy any more from Tiernan. I really hope so, because we need to drive to the metro in Berlin Friedrichshain for that. And that's two hours one way. We used around 250 liters of soap. And due to some defective toilet brushes or some just vanished toilet brushes, we had to buy around 50 of them. We also handled lots of dangerous goods, for example, for cleaning toilets and washing machines and dishwashers. This is around half of what we dealt with. And we have some fun facts about purchasing too. Um, as of now, Metro doesn't have any lime in Germany. <laughs> You may also have noticed that we had three different kinds of toilet paper during the event. We started with one ply, very dark toilet paper, but we couldn't do this to ourselves and to none of you. So we got some free ply. <laughs> but at some point we ran out of free ply, so we went to the Metro in Friedrichshain again and bought some more free ply toilet paper. So I went there and told them, yeah, I need four pallets of toilet paper. And they looked at me and said, well, we don't have four pallets of three-ply toilet paper. So we took three of three-ply and one of four-ply toilet paper. So if you find really nice toilet paper, please leave it. <laughs> so right now, they only have one ply. The Metro Oranienburg, where we have been for most of the fresh fruit delivery, also lime, is out of paper towels because we needed new paper towels. Um, as we had to drive so many kilometers, to Berlin and to Oranienburg, uh, the two people who were doing the purchasing, this includes me, spent around 50 hours sitting around in cars. We hope this will be less next camp. We bought around. <laughs> we bought around 25 kilometers of barrier tape, and I looked it up 30 minutes before this talk. We have around 500 meters left. We had to buy 10 replacement tires for the handcarts. I don't know what you people are doing to them. And, but we, and we have two broken handcarts right now without replacement tires. And if you've seen some, uh, be, uh, some bean bags, we actually also bought three cub cubic meters of filling because they were pretty empty after last Congress. So if there's any questions about what else we purchased, just come to us after this talk. Yeah, the most annoying object to transport by far was this uh, thing, we call it Drati, it's from Komona. Um, sadly, they do some really cool stuff with it, so we can't just throw it away. Um, but it's a pain in the ass to transport because it doesn't fit on a forklift and it's bouncy and it doesn't really fit on a truck and it's totally fucked up. <laughs> Um, we, we also did a, some sort of post office and received a total of around 1,000 packages. Most this, this. So hands up, who used this service? This does not include packages that we ordered ourselves for the lock or for any teams or for the purchasing. It's just you. And sadly, most of them were from Amazon. 
Yes. So we transported the same stuff at least um, three times from Berlin to camp. Um, we told DPD at least two times to actually deliver the packages to our tent and not drop them on some grassland or tell us we are not, um, we weren't available to collect them when we are 24 hours open. Um, and we didn't take enough pictures, as you see on all the text slides. Yeah, we also, I just received this news uh, earlier, so I couldn't put it in the slides anymore. Um, we're using, we're moving a lot of stuff, and you're moving a lot of stuff too. So, if you are driving a vehicle that's need, that needs diesel fuel, don't stop at any fuel stations in Granzee or Zedenik. They don't have any. We also noticed you tested some of the bridges in front of the um, cash desk, and well, they don't, they are not camper-proofed. So if you drive a camper o over this uh, bridge, well, you get a, C a three sinkhole. And we also got a gas storage. Um, we didn't know about this until a day before we had to build it. So if you plan to bring a lot of dangerous goods, like 70 uh, bottles of gas to the camp, next time, please tell us beforehand. And beforehand doesn't mean a week. It means two or three months, please, at least. Yeah, but we are not done yet. We are staying here until uh, 1st of September. And we have to pack around 130 pallets, we have to move a lot of stuff to Leipzig and Berlin, and we have an unknown amount of other transports to organize. So if you can, stay, foot, uh, stay during tear down, help us to tear this event down. Yeah. Do some angel shifts. We need a lot of angels to tear stuff, to tear stuff down. And as you can see, it's only two of us. And I know it's only two of us in this whole lecture hall because all the others are currently working on tearing this event down. Please support them. Thank you very much. The next team on my list is C3 Sustainability and C3 Yellow. So now again the question, who used the service from the lock to get a parcel delivered here? I couldn't see all the hands up, so... Hey, come on, there were a thousand packages, so there must be more people here in the room. Or did you all get like 20 parcels? But amazing service. Hi, uh, so this is um, a joint presentation of C3 Gelb Yellow, the team that uh, managed hygiene, and the new team CCC Sustainability. I'll start with some information um, from C3 Gelb. So during camp, we used approximately 1,355 cubic meters of water, like until this day and calculated to the number of people, that is 271 liters per person. Seems legit. Um, C3 Gelb ran washing machines. We did 50 laundry loads during camp. And probably you know the Spülen as a service, dishwashing as a service service. We had three of them on site at two locations. Um, they were on the high load, permanently used, but the waiting time was mostly below 20 minutes. It was the first time that we did this here, so sorry if uh, it was not as smooth as it could be. Um, in total, we had 80 angels that helped us with the dishwashing. We also had water dispensers at two locations. At Heaven, it was at use approximately half of the time. At the lake, it was basically used all the time from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. These machines can do three liters per minute. For the sparkling water tap, we used 50 kilograms of CO2. 
That makes approximately 5,000 liters of sparkling water. We don't have data for the non-sparkling water, but we guess it's at least the same amount. So you did good, you drank water, but drink even more. Uh, we had 190 people that actually did this uh, bureaucratic hygiene diploma. And many, many thanks to Easy from Kidspace who did uh, the briefings on site and uh, like stamping and signing. So this concludes um, 3C Gelb. If you have questions, maybe now is the time. Yeah. Please get a microphone for the question. There are two angels in the hall which have microphones. I know that the water dispensers were put in to help save plastic so that we don't have as many plastic water bottles. Do you have any statistics on how many plastic water bottles we had this year versus the last camp? Uh, no, we don't have data on that, but we have plans um, to improve the, the water bottle situation for Congress. Thanks. Okay, then I move on to CCC sustainability. So, as you know, power is provided by uh, fossil fuel generators. We used approximately 4.5 liters of, well, it's not, yeah, diesel, whatever, like the heating oil um, per person, like inc including the whole time until now. Um, for the climate impact, that's approximately 13 kilograms of CO2 per person. Um, so this means like it's approximately the same as when you drive 100 kilometers with a car. So this doesn't sound so bad, but of course uh, it would be nice to, to have other solutions in the future because we cannot afford to, to burn fossil fuel anymore. So. So we ran around and got some pictures of solar panels and solar cells at the campsites and there were actually a lot of them, so this is very good. We want to see more of that next time. Bring your solar cells. And now I hand over to... Oh. Okay, <clears throat> so we are, we are, we know about uh, that. Um, we need to change something in how we provide power to all of us. So we are all using power for all kinds of different things: heating, cooling, lights, and charging devices are only four of the major ones. So we uh, put up a work group, um, which we call as a working title event grid to actually pull up a completely new full-stack green DC power network for future camps and um, outdoor events international. So it's not only uh, CCC camps, but also other, other outdoor events like Shah, for example. And, and we were lucky to build on the knowledge um, of the Shah, which did already a test run. So we are now focusing on these items which you see on the slide. So we try to build up a smaller power grid, DC power grid, to enable a shift to green power, um, which is for the consumer devices, and a backbone, which has around 300 to 400 volts DC power. Um, we want to also provide some more insights on how we use power. So. We would like to visualize even better um, how much power we use, so to make you guys all a little bit uh, more uh, aware of how much power we are using, for example, what your village uses right now. Um, so new power meters would be a nice thing, or extending on those we have on the, on the generators right now. And we would like to also provide um, completely new power meter as a, 
as a kit, as a do-it-yourself kit, so that you can have a power meter which is also um, enabled to do some 24-7 logging on your power usage and which you could also use uh, at home. Um, yeah, we provided uh, or we uh, set up a quick questionnaire for you, for all of you visiting the camp. Um, yeah, this is, this is uh, um, the survey URL. You can go to this URL. And on the slide before, you may have seen um, that we have a wiki. So at this point, uh, huge thanks to the Netherlands and to the Shah, which are providing this wiki. <clears throat> and you can look up all the stuff we were working on there in the wiki. And we will keep you updated on that wiki. So take the survey. This would be great. So thank you very much to C3 Yellow and C3 Sustainability. We have one more team to go, which needs to fit into the next five minutes. It's totally so. quick. One, one other slide. So, yeah, we would, you may wonder why I have this thing here. Um, we would just like to educate on uh, kind of help you can do. We put up these signs today. It contains a QR code which tells you how, a do, uh, how to do a do-it-yourself dust mask. Um, we had electronic waste recycling station. We organized organic waste, 15 bins. Please don't put bags in there. We started surveying to reduce meat consumption. We asked the bars to ask people if they want straws. And yeah, go strike. All right, thank you very much. And the last and final team which comes up to the stage today is our awesome heaven. So please, a huge round of applause for the heaven. So I had no time to bring slides because all the heaven is working very hard to get things done as we did all the time, but we didn't do it alone. Um, you saw all these teams who were doing something here. All of these are angels. All of these are more or less part of our team um, as we are coordinating the angels. We are the angel group and not everybody is part of such a team. So we had a, a quite additional stuff to do and are still trying to do something. At the moment when I wrote down the numbers, there were 66 people working, 66 angels working, but we were missing a lot of people. Um, this is just those who were in, in the shift tracks, so those we are tracking, there are a lot of more people working on the teams and everywhere. So we still have uh, about 170 hours open shifts for the next three hours, so open shifts where we need people, which are coordinated through the system, and there's a lot of more stuff to do that we don't have shifts for. And uh, there are also a lot of night shifts that we need to do. But over the whole camp, since, uh, or for the on-site stuff, we tracked 20,000 hours. This is about two years, two and a quarter years, which was worked by volunteers just here on the site, um, which I believe is a very great thing. <laughs> this work was done by 1,836 people who are marked as arrived angels. We don't track who actually did work, uh, but a lot of them really worked hard to get all this camp done. And yesterday we introduced the Angel Awareness Day. I hope everybody hugged or thanked at least two angels. And we ask you to do so again. If you didn't do it yesterday, please do it twice today. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you all the angels that are working here at the place. We have a lot of people in this tent working, so thank you here as well, uh, and a lot of people outside. So if you can yeah, do two hours of work today or tomorrow, that would be cool, even if you're not one of the 
angels in the system. We really need people for traffic, for tear down, lock also told you that they need people. Um, it's a lot to do. Um, we have still 1,700 open hours, open shifts in the system that are checked in the system, so it's more or less for today and tomorrow. So actually, yes, we need some help more, but as I said, we already did a lot with a lot of people, which is absolutely great. And everybody who had not their time checked, please send a ticket to ticket at C3 Heaven DE so that we can uh, count your numbers. And this was all from us because we have to get back to working. Thank you very much to the Heaven. We have a lot of more awesome teams which were not here at the stage right now. We have the CERT, we have the POG, we have GSM, we have so many more teams. So please give a huge round of applause for all the amazing work which is done on this event.